In this video, we're going to start talking about definite integrals. So we've already seen that there are a whole lot of quantities, bulk quantities, whether it's we're talking about volume or distance or the money lost by a startup or the moment of inertia or an area, all sorts of things are approximated by Riemann sums. The slogan is the whole is the sum of the parts. We break something up into little pieces. We figure out the contribution of each piece. And we add up the pieces, and that's a Riemann sum. Where if we're going where, you know, you, we usually take the pieces to all be the same size. So if we're going from A to B, then the width of each piece is B minus A over N, and we call that delta X. And capital N is the number of pieces. And then F is something that's telling you how much we get per unit width. If we're talking about area, that's height. And that's the, the simplest thing to think about. But if we're talking about distance, that's speed. If we're talking about money lost, it's the rate at which you're losing money. Okay. And then we have a bunch of points, A plus I delta X. And we've divided things into intervals. And the ith interval runs from Xi minus 1 to Xi. And then from each interval, we pick a representative point. Could be the left end point, could be the right end point, could be the midpoint, could be the highest point, could be the lowest point. It could be absolutely anything you want. And we add up the pieces. And if we want more accuracy, we use more pieces and more pieces and more pieces. And eventually, the exact answer is the limit as the number of pieces goes to infinity. And we call that a definite integral. The notation is integral sign, which is this stretched out s, s for sum, from a to b, f of x, dx, means the limit of this sum. Now, that assumes, has some assumption. It assumes that the limit exists. It also assumes that the limit doesn't depend on how we went about picking up our representative points. But we're not going to sweat those details, because it turns out that whenever f is continuous, the limit exists and doesn't depend on how you pick those points. And for a whole lot of discontinuous function, it still exists and doesn't depend on how we pick those points. Any function for which this works is called integrable. And almost every function that you'll ever run across is integrable. You have to work pretty hard to come up with some counterexamples. So how do you visualize an integral? The simplest way is as the area under a curve. Because if you want to figure out the area into the curve, you would break it up into pieces. And the area of each piece, each piece is a rectangle, that would give you f of your representative point times the height, and that's approximately the area of the piece. So since the area is, the, the, is approximately the sum, the area is the limit of the sum, so the area is the integral. So even if the problem didn't come from area, even if it had to do with distance or money lost or volume or whatnot, you could always visualize it as the area under the curve y equals f of x from a to b. Okay, Because the area under the curve is given by that integral. Okay. Of course, that is only if the function is positive. What if you have a function that's negative? If you have a function that's negative, then you pick your points. And for each point, f of x is negative. So f of x times delta x is going to be negative, And you're adding up a bunch of negative things. Well, that's going to give you something negative. That's not an area. But the point is that in this case, if you take f of x times delta x, that isn't the area of this rectangle. It's minus the area of the rectangle. So if you add up your pieces, you get minus the area of the first rectangle, minus the area of the second, minus the area of the third, minus the area of the fourth, minus the area of the fifth. So in this case, you don't get the area under the curve. You get minus the area over the curve. So when the function is negative, the integral is negative, even though areas, of course, areas are always positive. So you don't get the area over the curve, you get minus the total area over the curve.
Okay, so instead of getting the area under the curve, you get minus the area over the curve. And if you have something that is positive some places and negative some places, well then the contributions from these slices are going to give you the area of region 1. And the contributions for these slices are going to give you minus the area of region 2. So the integral is going to give you the area under the curve minus the area over the curve. And we call this assigned area because we're not literally counting area. We're counting this area positive where the function is positive. And we're counting this area negative where the function is negative. But we usually get sloppy. And even though we're technically talking about sine area, we still call it the area under the curve, even though, strictly speaking, it's a signed area.